As many of us celebrate Halloween tonight, we're releasing a special show, Hunting for Seasonal Rolls. If you're on the hunt for some extra cash in your pocket, or maybe to pay down some bills, you're listening to the right show. You might have missed out on cashing in on Halloween this year, but additional holidays are around the corner. Stay tuned. I was an engineer and in 2008 lost my job due to the economic collapse. Jobs were scarce. I didn't know where to turn to get help updating my resume. Online services and coaches charge hundreds, even thousands of dollars. I took matters into my own hands and learned how to craft interview winning resumes. Shortly later, I landed a job with a Fortune 500 company. I have helped many achieve similar success. Now I share my tips to create interview winning resumes, interviewing excellence, and high performance growth strategies on my podcast, Career Growth Made Easy. Happy Halloween from the Career Growth Made Easy podcast. I'm your host, Craig Ansell. We're rolling into episode 178, Hunting for Seasonal Rolls. Ha ha ha. All right, we're celebrating Halloween tonight. In the intro, I hope it piqued your interest. Talking about a special show. Yes, you can hunt for seasonal rolls. It might be a little too late for Halloween this year, but here's the great news. There are some ways to put some extra cash in your pocket or maybe pay down your bills. And it's because you're listing this show, you'll get some extra ideas. The holidays are still upon us. We're going into the fall and winter seasons. Halloween is going to wrap up tonight with the great bang, some trick or treats for many of our kiddos and for some adults that are still visiting homes and checking on candies and tricks. But, what happens after that? Well, we roll into Thanksgiving in the United States, followed by Christmas, and then New Year's Eve and New Year's Day celebrations. So, thinking about hunting for seasonal roles, how can that apply to you? Well, a quick search on the internet showed me that there were a number of Halloween opportunities available. Selling Halloween costumes, carving pumpkins, being a Halloween party planner, creating a special Halloween recipe book, even instead of the recipe book, selling your special recipes, selling your Halloween treats. And then I thought of a couple cool ones here that I wanted to share too. Creating a haunted house. I've seen this in people's garages, as well as using part of their homes or their additions for a haunted house or even their backyards. All it takes is a few sheets hung up by some strings, some spooky music, scary lights, and maybe a smoke machine or two or a fog machine, and you could be in business. Add a couple hay bales and you're rocking and rolling. Going from there, though, this is pretty cool. I don't happen to have too much artistic capability, but how about a Halloween makeup artist? Hmm. Does that spook some of your thought? Does that give you some thought there? I was really kind of interested and surprised when I did a search for jobs on various job boards regarding Halloween themed jobs. I saw some stores that were asking for assistant manager positions to be filled. Okay, no big deal there. Even, you know, even store manager positions. And again, it would be seasonal. So it would be only for a period of time before, during and after Halloween. It would taper off. However, this one caught my interests, returning assistant managers. And I'm not going to share the store with you. You'll need to find those on your own, depending where you live in the U.S. But returning assistant managers, you guessed it, any person previously working in our certain chain stores. So now they've keyed up upon the fact that they've had returned people applying for jobs. So rather than just call it assistant manager and then assume you need to be trained up, they're now creating positions called returning assistant manager and returning position XYZ. More than, I didn't dig into the details and you're more than welcome to do it if that piques your interest or you have prior Halloween store 
retail or service knowledge. But my guess is they're going to be want that they're going to want to offer you a pay increase or a potential hiring bonus for coming back the following year. So maybe that's something you can look forward to saying I have experience with your company. I provided service the last year or the prior years and in fact during one of my um, seasonal roles I was noted for my leadership skills and actually offered a promotion into assistant manager. So I'm very pleased your company recognizes my talents and skills and I'd like to come back as a returning assistant manager. So I thought that was pretty cool to share that companies are now putting those titles out there knowing that these jobs are seasonal. Switching the pace a little bit, talking about food services, restaurant cleaning staff. What can you think of when I bring that up? Well, bussers, kitchen cleaning personnel, and bar backs and bartenders come to mind. Now, let's talk about bussers. First of all, bussers typically are those people that work in the living room or the, let's try that again, <laughs> work in the dining room and check around, have a good eye, a watchful eye for dirty tables. Uh, people are done with their plates and they just do partial or full table cleanup. Depending on how the bussers work in certain companies or certain um, restaurants, they may also actually clean the table and then prep it for the next set of guests coming in. Kitchen cleaning personnel, that's a good one. Potentially, the bussers could come into the kitchen if they have multiple rolls and then clean the uh, plates and silverware that they just bust off the tables. But typically, bussers do stay a majority of their time, if not full time, in the uh, dining environment because that's their role to keep the tables served and clean, ready for the next set of customers. But on the cleaning side of things, you could have a full time job in the kitchen just cleaning the uh, the cook staff's cleaning silverware and equipment, as well as any of the dining room person's, uh, dining room guests' materials that have come in, plates, dishes, silverware, things of that nature. Um, didn't mean to include barback and bartender in the cleaning side of things, but it has a partial uh, connection, so I'll explain to you. If you didn't know, there was a difference between barback and bartender, which I didn't. There is a difference. And the barback's job is to ensure that the bar runs smoothly so the bartender can do their job efficiently. Never having heard of this position, I can tell you, though, that I've seen, seen it without recognizing it as a customer. I can tell you that I envision the role something like this. They'd keep the ice bins full for the bartender, cleaning the bar once patrons, patrons have left, and that's kind of similar to what bussers do for uh, restaurants. And... Also, they'll keep the soft drinks, coffees, and teas flowing. None of those containers, decanters, should be ever empty or, you know, malfunctioning during bartending time because you want to always offer the maximum ability for customers to have choices. The, the bar back potentially could swap out trash or recycle bins and then fill any mixers, any drinks, or swap out empty alcohol bottles so that the bartender always has full supply to offer the customer. So now that Halloween's here today, and we're a little late to take advantage of it this year, what can we do going forward? Why would I mention this today? Well, here's the trick. Here's the kicker. Most of the roles that we've talked about tonight and we'll talk about apply to the next holidays in the U.S., the next three holidays. I mentioned in the intro, we have Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's Eve, as well as New Year's Day upon us. So let's back up a bit and see which some of, if some of these job roles would apply for those holidays coming up. Hmm. Selling to customers. Hmm. What does that mean? Well, it applies to Thanksgiving, but it also applies to Christmas and New Year's Eve. With all the online store systems out there, you can practically sell anything, anywhere, anytime. And you don't even need to leave your home. Let's say you don't drive, or it's really crazy traffic where you live and you prefer not to drive. You can create costumes for Thanksgiving, sell them online, charge for pickup and delivery fees directly to your customer. You'd be selling to customers without even leaving your home. So costume supply is certainly a good one, costume creation. And if you're good with sizing clothes, you can offer children's and adult sizes. Now, while I was writing up some of this content, I thought about a niche way to do this uh, costume clothing thing as well. Pet costumes. They've become quite the rage lately, especially since COVID, where we spent a lot of extra time at home. Now, maybe 
you'd like to try out your creative clothing skills on your own cat or dog. But what if you don't have a furry friend? Well, check out your friends, your neighbors, and see who might be a willing candidate to donate their puppy or kitty cat for a trial run. If it works out well, maybe they'd be willing to take their dog down the sidewalk for a walk. And when they do, they're doing custom clothing free advertising for you. I think of it's a way to get the word out. But how would you do it? Well, business cards, scannable QR code on the outfit, or maybe a small pouch with cards on the side. By the way, speaking about these talents for clothing, the same talents you have here apply the rest of the year. We talked about Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's Eve, but it even rolls over into next year. Valentine's Day would be a big one too, and there's others to think of. Once you've got the various sizes down, such as children, adults, pets, you can keep a log of the dimensions, how you've sized the clothes, and all you need to do for the next holiday season is change up the exterior decorating. I don't know if it's going to be in the form of clothing, felt, spray painting. Uh, I don't know. It's up to you. Depends on what your creative skills are. But once you have that format, that template, if you will, of the various sizes, it makes it a lot easier moving forward. Now, speaking about creative and art skills, maybe you're not into clothing. Maybe you have a knack, though, for makeup. Have people always commented on your hair, your nails, or maybe your face makeup? This is where it pays to be a good listener. I've talked to you about this before using the two ears, one mouth concept, right? For career growth made easy, we want to listen twice as much as we speak. Absorb and process what you're hearing, what you're seeing around you. Pause and then respond. So back to the topic about makeup. If you've been receiving feedback, there's a reason why you've been receiving these compliments. Try out your skills on your friends, family, and neighbors. If things go well, you now know that you can not only do your own makeup with excellence, but also do it on others. You're able to transfer your gift of makeup to others. And I just thought of something, by the way, while recording this show. Something that I always wanted to learn, but then had an opportunity to start, as it turns out, right before COVID. I love barbecuing on my grill in the backyard, but I always wanted to learn how to smoke meats. I had a detailed training opportunity back in 2019, and ever since then, I haven't stopped meat smoking since. As my skills progressed, I received rave reviews on my hickory mesquite mix smoked pulled pork and sliced brisket. Latest invention or latest trial run was on apple cherry wood smoked salmon. And that came out really, really well. To make sure it's not a fluke, I'm going to do a few more runs of that to make sure I'm consistent. But my point though is this. I really enjoy smoking meats and fish apparently. I've been interested in it for years, but I didn't know how. And apparently, I didn't want it bad enough because I didn't pursue it strongly enough. But back in 2019, when a special training opportunity presented itself, I seized it full force. Now, oddly enough, it's only, it was only verbal instruction that I received, albeit in person. And it was an unexpected setting, so there were no hands-on efforts. I didn't travel somewhere for special training. I learned from two very passionate people, two passionate experts, and I also learned from asking detailed questions and asking detailed process steps, but absorbing, absorbing their information was the critical point, the two ears part, listening twice as much as you speak. My point about all these details, is there something in your life that you've always been interested in, but yet you haven't pulled the trigger to research or attempt to do on your own? If so, maybe now is the time to take action. On the other hand, if you've already started exploring an interest, how far have you gotten? I'd love to hear from you on social media about what you're interested in as a hobby. Maybe you already have a hobby that's turned into a side hustle and you're making some extra cash, just like we're talking about today. I'd love to hear from you if it is seasonal, like we're discussing on today's show, or you've turned it into recurring income where it's rather regular and you're getting some extra income for cash in the pocket or to pay down your bills on a regular basis. You can reach out to me on social media at Craig Ansell. That's C-R-A-I-G-A-N-C-E-L. I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. Looking forward to hearing how you cashed in. My point 
given today's show title, Hunting for Seasonal Roles. Maybe you cash in now on a new passion. Maybe one of more, excuse me, maybe one or more of your hobbies is prime for some extra cash right now. In closing, I'll leave you with this. If you're unsure what you could do to earn some extra cash, don't ignore the clues and feedback from your friends, family, neighbors, and even strangers when you're out and about. Maybe waiting in line at a restaurant or a store, something happens. If you routinely receive a certain type of feedback, such as, you, you handled that really well, or wow, I wish I was a people person like you, then explore that feedback further. With today's availability of our digital friends, cell phones, tablets, and computers, we're online more than we are acting in person. We have contactless deliveries for food, home and auto goods, and general merchandise. If you're people-friendly, there are plenty of businesses that could use your skills, and I mean both in person and virtually, and they would both, both positions would benefit from your energy and skills and your communication abilities. Keep that in mind next time you get feedback. What kind of feedback is it? Are you good at a certain hobby or skill and never thought about turning it into some extra cash? Maybe you use some of that effort to volunteer with, and then once you hone it, you find out you're really great at what you do and you enjoy it, then you start turning it into some extra cash and paying down some of your bills or debt. I'm Craig Ansell, and I've been your host of the Career Growth Made Easy podcast. As we're wrapping up this year's Halloween season and our podcast show, Hunting for Seasonal Roles, episode 178, I appreciated you being with me. We'll see you next week. Ha 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 ha. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe to our channel. New episodes every Monday. In the meantime, why don't you follow us on social media at Craig Ansell on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. To book a coaching appointment, download our free guides, or join our email list, check out the links in the description below.